If you've been around the fire service at all, you've undoubtedly heard the older generation of firefighters speak negatively about the younger generation of firefighters, saying that they're lazy, they're entitled, they think they know more than they do, and all sorts of other things. Well, whether or not that's helpful is debatable, but what is true is the younger generation is here and they're not going anywhere. So in this video, I wanna address some things that aspiring firefighters or maybe new or younger firefighters, maybe you only have six months, a year, two years on, things that you can do to be the type of firefighter that every fire department wants to hire. So let's get right into it. The first and most obvious one is you have to be fit, right? You've heard me talk about this before on this channel, being fit is so important as a firefighter. And I know there's people out there that'll say it's not that important, it doesn't matter, that's nonsense. As the new person on a crew or on a department, you will be expected to do the more difficult jobs. In other words, don't expect that you're gonna be the pump operator in your first year, it's not happening. Um, so you have to be fit. You have to be able to keep up with everybody else and you will be expected to be able to do more and handle more, chances are because you're younger, fitter, stronger, et cetera. So if you're not fit and you're not in shape and just putting on your gear, you're gonna get injured, don't be that person, get in shape now. The next thing is when you join a new department, whether you are on a department currently or you are thinking about getting into the fire service and you haven't joined yet, um, you need to come in as a clean slate. Now this is sometimes difficult because the fire service usually attracts people with type A personalities and generally people with type A personalities don't like to be wrong, right? Nobody likes to be wrong. I don't like to be wrong. You probably don't like to be wrong. Nobody likes it. Um, but even if you come into a new department and you have a decade's worth of experience somewhere else, you need to be a clean slate. However they do things at your current department is what you should be learning. It doesn't matter how they did it where you used to work. It doesn't matter how they did it when you were in the Army, the Air Force, Navy, or wherever else that you were. Now, obviously, if it's something that's going to put your life or somebody's life at risk, then it might be worth speaking up about. But in the meantime, when you're first new and you first start, you need to be a clean slate and you need to learn things their way. This is so difficult for a lot of people, and I don't understand why they do that. And it seems like it's particularly difficult for people when they first come out of uh, the, the fire academy or fire school. I don't understand why, because there's a lot you don't know yet, um, but it doesn't necessarily matter what you learned in the fire academy. You need to be doing it the way that your department, your new department, and particularly your new crew does things. Next, every single fire department, really every organization out there, wants people that are humble and are hungry. Humble, this kind of goes in with the clean slate thing. I don't care how much you knew before or how much you think that you know. There's a lot that you have to learn. And ironically, the best firefighters out there are the ones that understand that, that you're always learning, you're always evolving, there's always something new to be, to be taught or learned. Um, so you need to be humble and know that you don't know everything and that chances are you're probably working with somebody or a group of people that have decades worth of fire experience. You need to be humble and you need to learn from them because I promise you they know a lot of things that you don't. However, you also need to be hungry. You need to be the person that's going and wanting to learn more, that's wanting to expand your skills and abilities. Now, obviously don't be that annoying person that's constantly bugging everybody, asking them questions to an extent, um, but be the person that constantly drills the basics, right? You need to be the person that gets your gear on faster than everybody else when you're new. You need to be the person that's first up in the morning when you're new. You need to be the person that understands the streets and knows the tools better than everybody else. You need to be humble and you need to be hungry. And that's gonna go a long ways when you're new on a department. You need to have thick skin. Now I've talked about this a little bit in some of the other videos, but I, I actually heard a really good uh, quote and I can't remember where I heard this. So whoever said this, I'm gonna give you credit. I just can't remember who it was, but it went something to the effect of try really hard not to be offensive, but try even harder not to be offended. Now, I think that's really, really important, especially in today's day and age where it seems like at the drop of a hat, everybody's ready to be offended and be outraged and, and whatnot. This is so important for the fire service. Part of the bonding experience of the fire department is the kitchen table and everybody makes fun of everybody else. Now, obviously, if it gets extremely personal or there's a personal attack or, or something like that, that's, that's out of bounds but generally you're gonna get razzed, okay? Um, just know that that's coming, just expect it and just roll with it. it. Everybody has their turn and it seems like every day it's somebody's new day to get made fun of. 
You need to have thick skin going in this. Also, by the way, if you're on a fire scene and you make a mistake, don't be surprised if someone yells at you. If you get if you get offended because somebody yelled at you, especially in a difficult situation, this, this field's probably not for you. Um, so you gotta have thick skin. Obviously try not to be offensive to anybody else, especially when you're the new person, you don't know these people. Um, but please, please, please know that this is coming and have thick skin going forward. Next, don't underestimate the power of being quiet. This also kind of ties in a little bit with the humble and hungry and being a clean slate. You learn best when you talk least. Um, and that's something I had to learn the hard way. I think a lot of people still haven't learned it. Um, and it's just obnoxious. Don't be that person that's constantly talking, especially first thing in the morning. Uh, people are getting off shift and they're tired. Maybe they had a bad night or maybe people are coming in from home and maybe they have kids and they were up all night or something was going on or they're working a second job. Don't be constantly talking all the time. Obviously be personable, be normal, especially when you're new, ask people for advice, ask people about themselves, get to know people. But um, a lot of people when they're new somewhere, they get nervous and so their nervous habit is just to talk incessantly. Don't be that person, it won't be taken well, just because A, it can be annoying sometimes, but also B, you need to be learning more than you need to be speaking, especially when you're new. And then finally, it's important for new firefighters or aspiring firefighters to find a way to be a linchpin. Now I use the word linchpin, there's a book out there called Linchpin, it was written by a guy named Seth Godin, he's a, he's a big business speaker, uh, but essentially the the book was written for businesses and for employees and businesses, but essentially the essence of the book is you need to find ways to make yourself indispensable to your department. So what does that mean? You want to be the person that is, all fire departments have met that person that after they've been on for a few years, they just kind of turn into a slug. And there's always this kind of uh, uh, dynamic between between the administration and the line guys and, and, the, and the firefighters. And so, you need to be the person to find areas in your department that can be improved. So what does that mean? What that means is maybe your fire department is moving more towards integrating with EMS and you have an EMS certificate. Well, maybe you go get a uh, EMS instructor certification and you teach classes to your crew and to your department. Or the same thing with a fire instructor. Go become a fire instructor and come back and train your department on new things. Maybe you have skills or abilities with uh, small engines and engine repair. Volunteer to be the person that works on the trucks. Um, maybe your department uh, could do some better community outreach and you spearhead those efforts. Maybe you start a community fire academy or start a, a community CPR or something like that. Find little ways and little cracks to make yourself indispensable to your department. Be the person that improves the, the, the entire organization as a whole. Once you do that, you're going to fit in a lot better. And I promise you, all fire departments are looking for people that fit these characteristics. So as always, if you find this useful, if you find this helpful, give this video a thumbs up, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel. And also, I know that there's a lot of really experienced firefighters out there. I've gotten messages from uh, people working at FDNY, some LAFD. Uh, if you have some advice for, for people that are looking to get into the fire service or maybe new people in the fire service, um, things that your department would be looking for and things that would make them stand out, throw it in the comments below. I've gotten such good feedback from a lot of you out there. So as always, found this useful and helpful. I will see you guys in the next video.